Hey, hi, hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Shannon. How you doing? Nice to meet you. I hope you're doing so very well. Today I have some Christmas video for you. I don't know what order this is going to be in because I'm pre-filming the ones that I can. So the number of Christmas videos will be on the screen so you know what day I am actually on. I, however, do not. Today I am bringing you the books that were released in 2022 that I still need to read and would like to read in the year of 2023, if possible. The first book I have here is Babel by R.F. Kuang. This has seen so much hype, obviously because of it being an Illumicrate and a fairy loot box and it is the author of The Poppy War. This book has been everywhere. I do not know much about it. Um, an act of translation is always an act of betrayal and it says Oxford 1836, the city of dream and spires. It is the centre of all knowledge and progress in the world and at its heart is Babel, Oxford University's prestigious Royal Institute of Translation, the tower from which all power of empire flows. Orphaned in Canton and brought to England by mysterious guardian, Robin Swift thought Babel a paradise until it became a prison. But can a student stand against an empire? Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> this sounds good. I mean, I know it's dark academia. I know that it's um, meant to be a very rich world. I know that it has really fun characters. But I, apart from that, all I know is what I just read to you and I'm excited to get to it to see what I think. And I would like to get to it next year because I want to get to it while it's still fresh so I can see everyone else's thoughts as I read this. So this is the first book that was released in 2022 that I need to read. The next book I have here is Mina and the Slayers by Amy McCaw. I read Mina and the Undead and really enjoyed it. It was so much fun. It kind of reminded me of like a Vampire Diaries-esque episode. Like there's this parts in it where there's diary writing that just gave Stefan Salvatore vibes. It also had nods to some of my favourite horror films and it just done it, done it for me. I really enjoyed it, really enjoyed the characters, really enjoyed the story. So in this one we follow the characters yet again and it is in New Orleans in 1995. Mina's having a killer Halloween. And I'm not going to read the synopsis to this one because it is a sequel. But if you're interested in this series, you should start with obviously Mina and the Undead. And it follows Mina as she moves to New Orleans to visit her sister. And then people end up start getting killed. And Mina has to try and figure out what's going on because she ends up in the middle of a lot of sticky situations. So yeah, I'm excited to go back and visit Mina and the gang and see what they get up to after the events of Mina and the Undead. So this is definitely one I want to continue on with in 2023 because I believe this is going to be a trilogy or maybe it's maybe it's a series. I actually don't know um, if it's going to be... Um, if it's going to be a trilogy or a series but I do want to stay up to date with it because it's fun and like it's just really entertaining so this is why I enjoy this and I'm going to get to it soon. I'm going to say that a lot in this video I feel. I feel it already and I'm only two books in. The next book I have here is The Dead Romantics by Ashley Poston and I have seen some things about this book. I'm pretty sure it made someone cry. I'm pretty sure people really loved this because I have seen some pretty amazing reviews so far and I believe this is a story of a ghost and human romance. I I have never read that so I would be happy to read it. Florence Day is a ghostwriter with one big problem. She's supposed to be penning swoon-worthy novels for a famous romance author but after a bad breakup Florence no longer believes in love and when her strict but undeniably hot new editor Benji Andor refuses to give her an extension on her book deadline, Florence prepares to kiss her career goodbye. When tragedy strikes and Florence has to head home, the last thing she expects to see is a ghost to her front door. Not just any ghost, however, but the stern former or still very hot yet now questionably dead new editor. As sparks start to fly between them, Florence tells herself she can't be followed for a ghost, even an infuriatingly sexy one. But can Benji help Florence realise love isn't dead after all? 
this sounds so interesting like a love story between a ghost and a human i've never read that before and like a rom-com that also deals with kind of grief in a way because someone does die and i take it she does fall for him and then realizes that he's actually dead which would bring on more grief this sounds so interesting i cannot wait to dive into this and see what it's all about and i hope that the emotions hit me like it has other people because i want i want to love this the next book i have here is book lovers by emily henry and i was so excited for this i don't know why i didn't pick it up in 2022 but i just didn't and i feel like i'm not gonna have time in 2022 to pick it up so it's probably going to be a 2023 read and this follows nora who is a cutthroat liter literary 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 why can i not say this word lit literary 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 i my voice sucks why can i not say literary it just sounds wrong i swear like ever since i started doing youtube i found words that i just can't say like massachusetts like it just sounds like massive two shits and i can't i can't with it okay and then like literary literary lit literary it just sounds so wrong but you you know what i mean okay you know what i mean um so she's an agent at the top of her game her whole life is books charlie is an editor with a gift for creating bestsellers and he's nora's work nemesis nora has been through enough breakups to know she's the one men date before finding their happily ever after to prevent another dating dud nora's sister persuades her to swap her city desk for a month's holiday in sunshine falls it's a small town straight out of a romance novel but instead of meeting sexy lumberjacks handsome doctors or cute bartenders nora ends up running into charlie her nemesis so to be fair like i feel like i could do a vlog with these two books because they both this follows a ghostwriter and this follows an agent and an editor so i feel like this would be a really good themed vlog reading books um centered around the book world and maybe if i find a third book i will make this a vlog let me know in the comments if you'd be interested in that in 2023 the next book i have here is devil house by john darnell this i was so excited for this okay and then i started reading reviews and they're not great so now i'm hesitant to read this but it sounds so good and it says that gage chandler is descendant from kings that's what his mother always told him chandler is a true crime writer with one grisly success and a movie adaption to his name along with a series of subsequent lesser efforts that have paid the bills but not much more but now he has been offered the chance for his big break to move into the house which locals call the devil house in which a briefly notorious pair of murders occurred apparently the work of disaffected 1980s teens he begins his research with a diligence and enthusiasm but soon the story leads him into a puzzle he never expected his own work and what it means the very core of what he does and who he is this sounds good like a house that murders took in a true crime writer goes to write a book set in this house and starts figuring things out and the truth comes out and they're investigating the murder like this sounds so damn good and i am still really excited to read it but i am now a bit hesitant i wish i read this when it was first released so that i missed reviews of it and didn't get hesitancy as to read this but now i'm like mm, not a lot of people like it am i gonna like it did i waste money 15 quid on this book i do not know i'm gonna have to read it and find out and i need to stop being a little bitch and just read it one book that you're probably sick of seeing on my channel just like um chain of iron because i suck is house of sky and breath i was so hyped to read this when it came out this i loved crescent city i actually reread crescent city in order to read this when it came out and then i got overwhelmed and just really like i was in the middle of a slump anyway but then i got overwhelmed because everyone was taking out content i was avoiding spoilers for every direction and i just got so overwhelmed that i stopped reading this and i stopped reading for like a couple of weeks just because i got overwhelmed and then i have tried to read it periodically through this year 
But then I realised that Sarah J Maas is probably not taking this sequel out till 2023, late 2023 or early 2024. So I, there is actually no rush to read this as I, even though I want to read this, I still want to read this, love this world, love these characters, amazing. And I do want to read this, but now I'm like taking the pressure off myself because if I read this now, I'm probably going to want to reread it before the next book comes out. Whereas if I read it halfway through 2023 and the next book comes out 2023, 2024, I won't actually have to read this and I can jump into the next book with full knowledge of what's going on. I was so overwhelmed, just so overwhelmed when this came out and I... I'm not mad at myself for not reading this. This was my most anticipated book of this year. And sometimes even when you're anticipating a book and even when you're really excited for a book, sometimes making videos, being on Instagram, being in the book community can be really intimidating when you're new to it. Like I still feel so new to making videos and so new to this community. So I was avoiding spoilers and then I was trying to read this quickly because I wanted to not get spoiled and then I just decided that I needed to take a break like a break from this a break from YouTube a break from Instagram so that I wouldn't get spoiled so I could avoid spoilers because I wasn't reading and I wasn't reading this but I do hope to read this in 2023 so that I can read the sequel when it comes out and enjoy it without the pressure which feels really nice and yeah one of my most anticipated and I didn't bloody read it welcome to my channel the next book I have here is Her Majesty's Royal Coven by Gina Dawson. Gina Dawson is one of my favourite authors. I really enjoy her work and I cannot wait to dive into this. This sounds so good. Through joining Her Majesty's Royal Coven, you can become a part of an illustrious witching legacy, stretching back to our founding sisters, Anne Bolin. We serve Gaia through service to the planet, the country, HRM, the Queen and the People. We work as a team to support the UK government in the handling of supernormal events and incidences, to uphold the tradition of witchcraft in the United Kingdom and to safeguard our continued legacy. Her Majesty's Royal Coven is a place for women and girls to reach their full potential, develop their gifts and enjoy the protection and sisterhood that only an official coven can provide. Coven? Witches? I mean, supernatural events occurring and these legacies have to help the government take care of it. Down. I'm so down for this. But again, I have not read this because this is actually um, signed. How beautiful is this? This is signed. Um, My best friend, Sethi. It says, welcome to the coven. I am now part of Her Majesty's Royal Coven. Uh, my best friend, Sethi, who is always linked down below, they got me this copy signed when they went to Yalk. And I am just so fucking thankful for this because it's beautiful and I love it and I need to read it but I again um not in like a huge hurry to read it this year because there is going to be a sequel and it's not going to be out till next year I believe so I would rather read this closer to the sequel date but this is going to be read in 2023 and I am so hyped for it because I've enjoyed Juno Dawson's work in the past and I can't wait to see what this is all about. Another book I would like to get to is one that I don't own yet, but I do plan on buying myself for maybe Christmas or birthday. It's going to be my treat to myself because why the fuck not? Is Falls Boys by Penelope Douglas. This is the first book in the spin-off of the Fall Away series. And I believe this follows the children of the original series. I love the original series. I have a vlog of me rereading them. I will link that down below or on screen. And I cannot wait to just join in this world and get glimpses of characters that I've loved and also see like the new generation just fall in love and mess about. I was planning on reading this in 2022, but I want to read the like novellas. So there's, I think there's Adrenaline and Next to Never are the novellas between the Fall Away series and this series. So I think I may do a vlog reading the novellas and then reading the new Falls Boys book. And I just really haven't had the drive to do that this year, but hopefully I will do that next year because I'm hella psyched to be back in this world. And I really enjoy Penelope Douglas, not for everyone, but I think they're great. And I love 
reading their work that's just so entertaining so yeah that is one that i would definitely like to get the next book i would like to get to is the last housewife by ashley winstead now i'm pretty sure this is going to be like a cult sex cult book but i'm i don't know because i haven't read it it says while in college in new york shay evans and her best friend met a captain i need to remember to breathe during videos because i swear i talk like i don't do this in normal life but I swear that when I talk in videos, I forget to breathe. And then I have to like sit here in deep breath for like five minutes just to continue on. I don't know. Maybe it's anxiety. I have no idea. This says, while in college in New York, Shea Evans and her best friends met a captivating man who seduced them with a web of lies about the way the world works, bringing them under his thrall. By senior year, Shay and her friend Laurel were the only ones who managed to escape. Now, eight years later, Shay's built a new life in Tony, Texas suburb. But when she hears the horrifying news of Laurel's death, delivered of always by her favourite true crime podcast, Crusader, she begins to suspect that the past she thought she buried is still very much alive and the predators more dangerous than ever. Recruiting the help of the podcast host, Shay goes back to the place she vowed never to return to in search for answers. As she follows the threads of her friend's life, she pulls into a dark, seductive world where wealth and privilege shield brutal philosophies that feel all too familiar. When Shay's obsession with uncovering the truth becomes so consuming that she can no longer separate her desire for justice from darker desire newly reawakened, she must confront the depths of her own complicity and conditioning, but in a world built for men to rule it inside the cult and outside it, is it even... Is justice even possible? And if so, how far is she willing to go? This sounds ace, right? Like, I really enjoy when books have like a podcast in them just because I enjoy podcasts. And I think it's a really unique thing in a book format. So I really enjoy when this like podcast element comes into books and then like the cult element and she coming out of her suburban life to like track down what happened to her friend. Like, that's pretty loyal even eight years later i am so excited to read this and see what it's all about and i really hope i enjoy it and here we have it this and false boys our 2022 releases i still need to read i'm gonna put this down because this is a workout okay and that is all i have for you today please let me know in the comments if you've read these and give me what rating you left them let me know what books if any that you were really excited for in 2022 and still have to read and would like to read in 2023 i would love to know in the comments down below thank you so very much for watching please remember to enjoy the holidays and remember to stay safe happy and healthy and i will see you next time bye she went away on christmas day Oh